Hello everyone. Mars in a couple days will exact its square to Neptune. This is the third square. This began in October, just before Mars began its retrograde journey in Gemini. So we're completing a whole cycle here. Before I tune into what that's about, I wanna start by just connecting with what is the inherent relationship between Mars and Neptune. It's always useful to consider that all planets exist in inherent relationship with one another because they're all part of a unified whole that we can say is what we are, that which we're experiencing here. So they're inseparable. I've spoken a lot about the inherent relationship between Mars and Pluto. It's a big part of the evolutionary astrology understanding, really understanding the relationship between those two functions. And they both have to do with desire, right? Our actions, our choices, and the deeper why behind them. What is it we're really trying to find in this life, Pluto? But I haven't spoken very much to the relationship between Mars and Neptune. So let's tune into this. Neptune, if we think about the essence of Neptune, we're not looking at choices. We're not looking at options. Neptune is the truth. Neptune is reality with a capital R. Neptune is the oneness. So the, the journey with Neptune, our personal experience with Neptune really corresponds to our relationship with what is. Not our dreams or illusions or conditions that we place upon what is, but our relationship to the truth itself. And the truth is meaningful. It's what's meaningful. Right? Love is the truth. Love is what's meaningful. The truth of unity. And this is always taking us beyond the very limited constructs and stories that we're wanting to put onto life in order to find it, what we believe to be meaningful. Right? This person is the one. Um, this condition in my life is a thing or this job that I got or the way that I look today or feel today or the feedback that I'm getting, like all these things that really come and go, but might provide within us a sense of existential rightness but then the sandcastle comes and that which made us feel so good and safe in life dissolves. Neptune's always reorienting us to surrender to not that which has form, not that which we can hold on to, not a condition that comes and goes, but what's fundamentally true. So Neptune then, then always speaks to our faith and our trust, our unconditional trust in what is. And I want to focus on this dimension. There are no choices. So when we're looking at love, when we're looking at truth, since this doesn't come and go, since it's not related to a condition in our life, Neptune doesn't deal in the realm of, is this better for me or is that better for me, right? Which relationship will work better? Who am I more compatible with? What's the better diet for me? Should I do this? Should I quit? Should I stay? How will I make more money? Neptune does not deal in those realms at all. Our thoughts do. Where we're identifying our problems and our concerns, that's what we're creating for ourselves. One of the teachings in A Course in Miracles is there's no order of difficulty in miracles because there's no order of difficulty in problems. We think there's an order of difficulty in problems, and then there are areas where we feel more receptive to grace and higher insight, right? Something to come outside of ourselves and wash the illusion away and reveal the truth. But then there are certain problems where it's like, no, no, that sand castle is a real big issue. But it's really no different than any other sand construction. So all problems really reflect the same illusion. And all answers reflect the same answer, the same teaching. When we place a lot of meaning and importance on the areas of life that we're just stuck on, we forget that there's always a higher perspective that isn't coming from separation, that isn't coming from a, a divided mind that's seeing this person or this thing or this conflict that is a detriment to my own peace and well-being. So Neptune is always pointing us to our peace and our well-being comes with what we are. So there isn't a condition that will give it to us. You know, the Neptune work can feel very disarraying and confusing and really hard to grasp for everyone because on the deepest level, it's not going to validate um, the meaning and the value and the, the, the solutions that we really think we need. 
So we're, we're left confused very often. We're left without a clear understanding or a clear grasp of how all things are coming together. And it's really helpful to understand that. Because what we get to cultivate in that space of not understanding or not knowing or feeling lost to meaning, it's just the recognition that, okay, what is meaningful, what is true already is. And so it must be available now. And this is where we learn to practice that. We learn to practice forgiveness. Our regrets, our grievances, what we're holding on to, the conditions we're trying to control, where we're stuck in our problems, we can at least recognize, I must not understand the truth. We don't have to bypass and we should not bypass our emotions. But we can also recognize, hmm, I seem to be really invested in my conflicts, in my perception of conflict, whatever it is. And to the extent that we believe that we're ready, we're available for this, it's like a little shimmer or slight foot in the door of insight and possibility to acknowledge I must be wrong. I must not understand. And so I'm open to learn. I'm open to be guided. Today's course lesson in, in the daily lessons that I'm on is only God's plan for salvation will work. And what that points to is there's an unfolding of all people, places, events, experiences from the point of view of truth that says it's all happening as it needs to. When we give it over any circumstance, even a mistake, every circumstance gets redirected towards the current, which only knows how to move towards oneness. There's no moment that can't be given back to God's will, so to speak. And this teaching differentiates between my plan for salvation, right? What I think needs to happen with the people, places, and things to find happiness, for peace, for wellness, for healing, and then the plan for salvation, what actually is happening. And there's that experience of, well, it's not going the way I want it, or it feels like I'm experiencing loss, or these things aren't working out. And those are the very places to really check our conditions that we're placing on God, the conditions we're placing on reality. And I think we're learning when we reorient towards the greater plan that isn't conflicted, it might feel very hard to really follow that path because what are we left with? We're going to be left with all the things we didn't get, the ways life didn't work out for us, all of our regrets. And then there's a purification there. This is where the water wants to wash us away. And it might be very difficult. I think this is one of the hardest dimensions of Neptune. And this really brings us into Mars, right? I could have made that choice, or should I be making this choice? With Mars and Gemini, we're really dealt with what seems to be an array of options of all possible combinations of archetypes. Mars and Gemini, Mars, action, decisiveness, courage, direction, leadership, Gemini, options, perspectives. Well, I can think of it this way. I can think of it that way. Hmm, if I make this choice, this will happen. If I make this choice, really Mars and Gemini, the challenge, and this is a challenge with Mars anywhere, we can get stuck in indecision relative to the fear of what happens when we make a choice. When you make a choice, you didn't make a different choice. It's very decisive. You can't undo it. You have to deal with the consequence of that. So Mars always needs to stay in motion. Mars and Gemini, where do I go? Right? It, it can feel like a traffic jam in the mind. And the challenge within Mars and Gemini is reckless action, just acting instinctively based upon the thought, right? Mental reactivity, you're having a new idea, you're having a new thought, I'm just running on it. And the restlessness and the chaos and the existential sense of void and crisis that we might be facing or that can be emerging on whatever level for us with this Mars squaring Neptune is feeling an internal pressure to have it understood. I need to logically construct my reality, Gemini, and know what to do, know where it's gonna go, make the plan, have the map all figured out, right? So that I can make sure everything is coherent, con congruent, peaceful, and clear. And we won't, and we can't. This is the thing with Neptune squaring Mars and Gemini.
we can't logically order our reality well enough to have it all planned out and to make sure it's all going to work out the way we think it's supposed to. So coming back to this greater cycle, this began in October, clearly dealing with choices, right? This is where there's a sense of, there's a need for leadership. What in our life isn't resolved? Where are we stuck in too many options or possibilities or thoughts? So the cycle that began with Mars beginning to station retrograde and Gemini squaring Neptune really brought up, there's a need to be making choices. There's a need to be moving ourselves in a particular direction. And I think this process just brought up a whole lot of awareness our questions, our conversations, our thoughts, the more we've been able to meet this without reactivity, the more we've been able to learn and gather greater perspective, see more of the picture. Mars and Gemini is just like, tr you know, jumping on an elephant and exploring the terrain. It's getting a little piece. Here's the back. Here's the trunk. Here's the eye. But it doesn't apprehend the whole elephant yet. It can't. Right? It's never actually going to be able to logically piece it all together well enough to understand the whole picture. The whole picture is Neptune. It's kind of beyond understanding. It just is. We have to trust it. We can begin to sense, oh, I, I understand there's an elephant here. I can trust there's an elephant here, although I don't see the whole picture. But we have been gathering more of the pieces and thus developing some more insight and wisdom into where we're going, right? How to be a leader of our own soul path. So then how do we navigate choice making? How do we become a leader of our own soul path while also trusting and surrendering and letting go of the need to control it and direct it in the direction we think it needs to go? When I look inside the answer that I find, what I'm able to access now is really understanding that no action or choice on its own has any meaning. It really points to what is the energy with which the consciousness that we're bringing to our actions. If we're believing there to be a problem, there will be some level of fear. If we trust that all is already well, it takes the pressure off of this idea of getting it right or getting it wrong. When we trust that all is well, we can move forward with a sense of serenity and peace and unconditional trust and love. The discernment, the point is, am I moving with haste, with anger, with defensiveness? with a sense of, I'm gonna be strong now, and Neptune Mars can easily speak to where there's that sense of vulnerability or feeling weak and then needing to be strong and powerful. But that's defensiveness, and if we feel we need to move in that direction, then we will. But to really look at, is love more available through my thinking, through my choices? Am I creating more confusion and separation with my choices? And how do we know if we're in separation? Just look at our thoughts. Are we in defense? Are we in fear? Are we fighting a battle? Or do we feel a sense of peace and acceptance and unity? What's interesting, that sense of unity and peace and acceptance will also, in this case, coincide very, very potently with a, and I don't understand. I don't understand the full picture because really, only when we allow ourselves to not understand, we really allow ourselves to be an open learner to recognize there's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to see. Only then can we also be in a place of love and forgiveness and acceptance because we don't create a reality for ourselves where we think we need to control. So this final square is really bringing together this quality of almost like penetrating through the illusion of choices, recognizing in truth there are no choices. And so the mind can't logically work that out because it might look like there are choices, but isn't that fun? Isn't this sort of like the Zen koan of, of awakening where in our logical ordering of reality, we can't understand how there's any kind of healing or truth or unity or perfection in this. And that's the point because the truth of our perfection is just beyond the identity construct that we're trying to organize and maintain in our minds. So it, there, there's a trust walk in this. And the insights and the learning, I think, will only happen by walking it. So this is a beautiful time to really cultivate um, responses and choices in our life that come from a place of trust and love and peace. That will lead us to whatever we're needing to see and wherever we're needing to go. Finally, 
the sun is actually joining Neptune. So wherever the sun transits, it's very heightened. It's like very illuminated. So I think the next few days are just an incredibly illuminated time. This can be a time for miracles, right? Where we give over our otherwise ordered reality of problems and seeming hierarchy of issues to just recognize that there's already a solution here. And it's beyond choices. It's beyond what we're organizing in our mind. To bring our relationships, our questions, our struggles, and things can feel existentially scary. We can be getting dream symbols and messages and things can feel really hard. And just remember, this is a helpful thing for us to remember. When the symbols of this dream world come up and they seem to be pointing towards fear, it's not because there's something to fear. It's because we're healing that fear, right? The purpose of fear is that we're healing it. Not that there's something that's happening to be afraid of. That shift in perspective takes a moment and it brings us back into an openness and a willingness to see differently. Thank you for watching.